Hi, Kat here from Lightweight Digital. In this video, we're going to be talking about a little trick that we discussed with a zipper effect using morphs and nodal displacement. But this time, we're going to have something that's a little bit more sophisticated where we're adding more morphs and we're going to be using a gradient instead of an image map to control the effect. Let's take a look at what this object looks like in Modeler so we can get an idea of what these morphs actually are. Here we are in Mor uh, Modeler, and we can see that we've got the morph button enabled so we can see our different morphs via the drop down box and we can see that when I cycle through these different morphs we've got positions where our little spiky ground grass bits here are crushed down we've got one where they're extended and bent and we've got another one where they're extended into another direction and also bent and then, of course, our base, the model, which just has them extended and going straight up. All right, so let's go back to Lightwave Layout and see how this is put together. First thing we need, obviously, is a control object. So this is just a simple null. There's nothing to it, really. It does have a item shape attached to it. Just a simple ball set at one meter. And it's set with x-ray so we can see through it. If we want to label this, we could. Let's call this control. All right. And we'll go to the object properties for our kind of weird gra grass blades. Let's hit P for properties. And look at the object stack. So we can see that we've got bones enabled, which we don't need because there's no bones in the scene. We have nodal displacement and we have subdivision because this is a subdivided object. And if we want to improve its display or render quality as it's subdividing the mesh, we can do so. Let's increase this to like five just for fun to make this bend a little bit smoother. Let's go into the nodal displacement and bring up the nodal panel window. In the previous video, we were using a pre-made image as a gradient, but in this case, we're going to be using a gradient itself to put this together. We need a couple of things in here, obviously, and we'll go through this nodal flow so you can understand what's happening. First item is item info. This is basically going to give us a control input into a distance node. And we've got a mesh info, which is a new tool. It gives us the object that we were going to influence based off of distance to and from or from and to and you've got a couple of options in here we want to use local coordinates okay and this is going to pump into the input of the gradient and this gradient is very simple there are a couple of keys in here nothing scary and this just gives us a influence over how far away the null is from the object that we want to displace and then we can add our morph maps. Now, again, there are three morph maps in here. And in order to mix them, once we select our morphs and provide it with the total amount that we want to morph it by, we can then add a vector node or add node under vector. And there are different versions of this so when you go add and search for that if you only want one morph you can just go and add one morph to another and pump the result into scale and this will bypass any of the numerical inputs so it's just going to work together as that value of those two nodes added together and then it goes into displacement so just working with those two morphs right now we can take our control null and move this around in our scene. Get rid of the gradient for a second. And we can see based off of the gradient input how much this null is going to influence those morphs based off of the distance. 
let's go back and disconnect this two morphs that have been added and use the add four instead just delete that because we've already got ours here set up ready to go and pump it into the scale and into displacement of course and then as we move this null around we will get all four or, or three of those morphs mixing together based off of distance using that gradient let's change this gradient around a little bit so we can see the difference in the influence based off those keys Now that gradient isn't going to perform in real time when you're sliding around like this you have to let go and then move the null but you can see how the influence of that gradient has changed the amount of the nodal displacement working with those parameters and thus influencing the strength of those morphs together again if you don't want these morphs to be super overbearing you can cut the morph amounts back and of course these can be controlled via envelopes which can then of course be controlled through other influences such as channel followers or expressions so you can see just how deep this kind of functionality can go we'll working with just simple math nodes a gradient and fetching information from another item in the scene to control the influence of those morphs and of course which object is going to be influenced by it it's a very very simple setup really not very complicated when you look at it it's only one two three four five six seven eight nine nodes which then of course plugs into the displacement which makes it ten so very very simple stuff it's just our object input information we don't need that right now but you can see just how simple it is and it's incredibly powerful so if you're doing a scene where you need to have something like a helicopter pass over a grassy field and influence the grass or you need something like a uh, vacuum cleaner pushing something over and you need to zoom into those microfiber scales on your carpet as you get those uh, nasty bugs out of it and a commercial with a vacuum cleaner from Dyson or something like that then this is a great solution you can also use this for things like footprints in a soft surface lots of different uses for this the sky's the limit